everybody, welcome back. It's Christina Gibb with the Artist Pod, and today we'll be talking about how to draw a horse. As always, I'm using a Wacom Intos Pro tablet, and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop. So, let's get arting. Alright, so here's the horse. Um, so, uh, I'm gonna do it in like a tanny, orangish kind of tan color with um, gray for black on the mouth, the tips of the ears, and the hair. Um, and then we'll be doing a splash of other colors after, particularly a lot of heavy blue um, for the shadows uh, and into the hair, where the, or probably, well, at least into the hair, maybe even into the face, uh, into the mouth where the, where the gray is, um, as well as a splash of like orange or yellow or red or some other sort of bright warm color to really kind of make it pop. But we're gonna get started with the tan color on the face. So um, as you can see, I've separated it out into kind of um, uh, chunks of hair, clumps of hair. Gosh, I always say it differently every time. So we're going to get started with that. Um, now I'm going to do the entire thing, this entire block of color in shadow. And when I, when I say that, what I mean is um, I'm putting very, very light pin pressure. I'm filling it in, but I'm putting very light pin pressure to do so. Um, right? So that gives the illusion it's in shadow. Now a few things to note, you know, there are a couple of ways to brighten up any of this. Uh, one is to just increase your pin pressure, right? You increase your pin pressure, obviously it gets brighter, but you can also do it by adding more lines. So as I'm doing these shadows and I'm not putting so many lines that I brighten it up, but I'm putting it enough that it's filled in. Well, and I guess technically I am kind of brightening it up, but it's still within a realm that can be considered um, shadow. Um, so I'm going to do the whole face in shadow, um, whole face and neck in this sort of orangish tan color, um, following the sort of segments of hair, right? So when I take this off, that little bit I've done, you can see where segments have run into other segments. So I am following that. All I'm really doing though to make a difference is I'm containing my, my strokes and then starting a new stroke with the, with the new clump. Um, and that'll be enough to indicate to us it's something different. So I'm going to get this whole thing done in a shadow and I'll be right back. We're gonna do the same thing with the gray, right? Or the, the gray slash black. Um, and so that includes the all the the hair here, the or the, the main the tips of the ears and the nose. Um, a little less of the fur segmentation on the tips of the ears and the nose, um, but there will be some in the longer the longer hair here. So um, I'm going to do all of that in shadow and then I'll be right back.
before we continue, I'm just going to go ahead and fill in um, the ears as well. I didn't really, I just kind of did the edge, so I'm going to get um, both ears in both the, the gray and the brown color, and I'll be right back. I'm actually going to have the light source coming from in front of uh, and above. So um, as I add highlights to this, I sort of build it up in different spots as I think about where highlights would be, but also I'm mindful of the fact that there's, um, you know, clumps of, of hair. Uh, so I don't quite highlight in the same sort of pattern I used to. Um, having said that, right, like above the eye, this is going to be in highlight. And when I say highlight, um, because we've already added shadows, I could just um, add, you know, more lines without having to add a lot of pin pressure, which is kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm just adding more lines. Um, but I can add pin pressure a little bit, um, but I don't have to, and it makes it a little easier to blend when I don't, right? And so as we take it off, you can see how that's starting. And then if I need to, or if I feel like this isn't bright enough, I'll brighten it up. Um, but right under the eye, always gonna have a burst if the light source is coming from above, whereas above, you know, there's a little bit of a stripe where the shadow, because it's rounding under, so it's doing the opposite of that. So I'm just kind of filling this in and being mindful of what's what. If it's coming from, you know, here, that means that you'll have a little bit of shadowing, you know, under the mouth, the neck, and this side a little bit, and not potentially on the other side. So just sort of where it's centered. Hair would be casting some shadow. So it is very much a, um, not as straightforward as how I used to shadow. So um, I'm going to get this done because it's going to take a while, right? Like I'm always kind of, as I do it, you know, I am sort of new to this sort of, not style necessarily, but the way that I'm drawing, I've sort of shifted it just a little and I am a little newer to it. So it's harder to explain how I'm choosing what to be in shadow versus highlight. Um, and it's gonna take a little longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish out um, the highlight for um, the tan and I'll be right back. So there's the uh, tan, and we're going to do the same thing for the gray, um, and uh, even though it's supposed to be black, I am going to put that kind of full pin, pin pressure down. But um, 
same kind of idea, right? So the nose actually dips down and it all fades over when we get over here. So I'm gonna fade that off. But you know, here, we'll give it kind of a solid burst and then down and around this way. But as we go under, like we start rounding down towards the nostril, I'm gonna let that fade off. Um, so I'll have this coming down and then fading. And then we'll have another you know, burst through here, but then also fading into, uh, into shadow. So, um, just like with the brown, right, I'm, I'm gonna um, get it done and then be right back. There's really not much to, to talk about except, you know, bear, bearing in mind where the light source is um, and just sort of not putting full pin pressure, but um, certainly uh, a little bit more and then you know adding in the lines um, to uh, to fill it in maybe a little burst here just to indicate it's poofing out oh that was a little bright right and then You know, the ears will do like I've already done the ears and then the hair. After we get done with the, the muzzle, Mason, the, whew, geez, the um, muzzle, nose, once we get done with this, um, it'll be a little bit more uh, straightforward-ish because it's going to be more like what we just did, right? So this is a little bit... Um, not exactly what we just did. I guess this itself is a little bit more straightforward, right? Um, that actually worked, giving it like a little grin by pulling out these two little pieces of hair. Um, you give him a little grin, kind of dissipate how noticeable his mouth is by drawing on it. Otherwise, I think that works. Just can change how um, deep this is by changing the shadows around it. So I'm just sort of modifying. Yeah, okay, so um, the hair is, is, again, just like what we did through here. You know, we're just going to fill that in bit by bit. Um, and then the ears are like what we did on the ears up here, so the ears are pretty straightforward. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little bit more of the f of the messing up the hair. I know I have um, these strands that I drew in. Um, if I can brighten these up, I probably should, I guess, finish them out. But then I'm also gonna add in um, some wisps of hair, which are easy to do. Um, 
And because of how this is drawn, that should make them it should make them easier to um, separate out when I'm adding a black background later. Right, so I'm just kind of finishing these out, right? You can see where I didn't connect them in some cases, or I'm just making sure they're connected as like extra um, hair coming up. And then we'll do, right. I think I actually did that on another layer. That's fine. Um, connect that down. Right, okay. So, now I'm gonna take it and lightly just make one swipe you know, I mean, more than one, but really one at a time. We can push this also into the um, tan brown color down here, right? So this sort of just messes up the hair more. And then you have kind of the singular strands which will look better. The only thing to keep in mind is not to let it go. And front of the ear. Right. Okay. So now I'm going to take blue, kind of any sort of light blue, really. Um, and we're gonna use the blue to fill in the shadows. So, right all through here, between there, and between all the, the fur. Right, not really holding back on pin pressure not going crazy on it. I'm not holding back either. And making sure that this blue layer is behind the um, the layer I just did for the uh, these little swipes. Right. So all of these shadows be where it's darker. So this is, is relatively straightforward, right? You can see how I'm following these, these lines around. I'm gonna go into the shadow down here, right? We're gonna fill all this in. And still following those um, bits of hair. It's just in the shadows, the bits of hair are what's uh, shadowed, so. So um, I'm gonna get this blue in uh, and I'll be right back. Again, sticking with the um, layer under the extra hair I added layer. Um, I'm going to add in a bit of um, orange or yellow, maybe red, hmm. maybe yellow, like a orangish yellow. Nice and bright, and this is going in areas that are highlight. It's like extra swipes, nothing big, just kind of like 
extra to what's already there. Again, just like I did with the blue, it'll be going even in spots that aren't this like orangey. Um, so even in the gray, I'm going to be adding this in. And I'm right now just targeting areas that um, would be extra highlighty. Right, so I'm going to do this. So I'm not going to do it on all the highlights. I'm basically looking for the areas that would be the potentially the brightest. And, you know, eyes are so important. Um, so I did it there. But um, I'm going to get this done kind of on like this sort of strip, maybe a little bit down in here, and then a little bit on the hair, and I'll be right back. So I take both of those off. The blue I actually think might be a little much. <laughs> I think I overkilled it. A little bit. Sure though, I kind of like it. That's without the blue, but with the yellow, you can see what I've done, right? Like really just chosen areas that would be really nice highlight um, and filled it in. Um, and the blue, mm, I'm gonna really quickly see if I can Maybe change a little of what I've done without getting rid of all of it. I am just going to do the blue again. I think it's great, but I almost feel like it's a little too much, so we're just going to back it off. Still through here all these shadowed sections but maybe not as much pin pressure or lines or you know back it off a little bit all right so um, I'm gonna do the blue again <laughs> um, and you know this this is a good point of saying no matter how much work it's gonna be if it doesn't quite look right to you it probably won't look right to somebody else, and it's worth um, trying to fix it. Um, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and get this done, this blue done, and I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, I think that's better. Not quite so overwhelming, but still very um, clearly blue. Um, of course, the eyes have a nice burst. So just sort of bouncing out, making a few little additions. Right? And not surrounding every little individual, but still putting blue throughout. Uh, anywhere where there's a deep shadow, obviously adding blue. So anywhere I forgot that, just sort of going back through and doing it now. You know, this is a light blue, but um, it still works to demonstrate shadow. Um, it's kind of the power of blue as a, as a color for shadow goes into color theory a bit. Um, but cool colors in general will work for uh, for shadows. They tend to recede, whereas warm colors push forward. So they pop forward in the in the composition. And uh, 
cool colors uh, recede into the composition, so they fade away. That's what makes it uh, so good for like, you know, adding blue to a landscape or something. Um, by making it more blue, you're making mountains or whatever appear further away. Yeah, okay. I actually think that works. So, really, oi. Um, the last thing is adding in, either I could do the eyes where I draw it in, or just add a bit of white. Let's see what happens if we add just a bit of white. Uh, I'm going to lower where I had initially drawn that. Mm. So I'm going to have to add more. I was worried about that because of the uh, lack of anything connecting to it. All right. So there we have it. All right, so that's how you draw a horse. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.